thanking our, our great panel today. We've got a, a great group of folks um, here to talk about election security. Brian Neesby from the State Board of Election, Tori Krass from State Board of Election, Maria Thompson from DIT, Jessica Nye from the FBI, Tom McGrath from uh, DPS, and uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Seth Barron from National Guard, and Sean McCloskey from Homeland Security. So um, if you guys have any questions as attendees, I know uh, we can't hear you, but if you'll go ahead and start chatting those into the, uh, into the window there, we'll get to those questions at, uh, a little bit later into the session, or if there's something that comes up, I'll, I'll try to keep an eye out, and I think Nate's gonna help me with that a little bit, and then I've got somebody here helping me as well, so. Um, if you know, so like if you have some topic that you really want to hear more about and we don't cover today, please go ahead and get that into the chat session early so we can get to those. Um, again, thank you all for um, agreeing to be a panel for Nickel Giza. Your uh, these presidential elections mean a lot to us at the county level, and we really uh, we want to do the, do our best to 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 make sure we're doing our part to keep things going. Uh, Maria made a great point that we are using Zoom today and that we want to make sure that the topics that we cover are open source and and keep them as generic as possible as we are trying to keep this election secure. So um, having said that, um, Brian, why don't you lead us off and we'll kind of work down the list of uh, everybody introducing themselves and telling us a little bit about uh, your role in the election support process. Uh, so I'm Brian Neesby, the CIO of the State Board of Elections. Uh, so my role is to uh, make sure that the, the infrastructure security apparatuses are all working for election day and early voting, um, and that I don't have direct management over the county offices, but there's 100 counties that actually do the groundwork of, of doing elections, uh, but that data rolls up from the counties to the states on election night and it gets displayed on our website. So we work in collaboration to make sure that uh, that goes as smoothly as possible. Thanks. Uh, Tori, you wanna jump in next? Sure. Um, thanks for, for having us all here today, first off. Uh, so I'm Tori Kras, a cybersecurity advisor for uh, Board of Elections, so helping with the cybersecurity uh, program at Board of Elections and uh, improvements uh, we're working on constantly uh, to just uh, keep things as, as safe and secure as we can. I'll leave it at that. Uh, Maria, you want to go next? Sure, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Maria Thompson. I'm the State Chief Risk and Security Officer with the Department of Information Technology. And I think a common theme you're gonna hear today is we're, it's really teamwork. And there's a lot of moving parts to how we secure our elections and what we go about our daily duties to ensure that it's secure. So i um, happy to be here and support my team. Um, supports in, in multiple ways. And I, I think we'll go into uh, more details a little bit later, but we are more in a supporting role, supporting, uh, you hear that word, supporting, uh, supporting uh, Board of Elections and anything that they need um, from, uh, for the days moving um, closer to the elections and after. Uh, thanks, Maria. Jessica, you wanna go? Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Jessica and I am the supervisor of the FBI Cyber Squad in Raleigh. Uh, we have two cyber squads in North Carolina, one that sits in Charlotte uh, and my squad that sits here in Raleigh. Uh, so my colleague, if you're on the western part of the state, is Brian Cyprian down there. But for the FBI, uh, specifically the cyber program, we're looking at any criminal or nation state intrusions uh, or unauthorized access across the board. But obviously with this specifically, focusing in on securing the vote, securing the infrastructure, around our election systems. And thank you again for the opportunity to be here. Thanks, Jessica. Tom, you wanna go? Hey, good afternoon. Tom McGrath here with uh, North Carolina Department of Public Safety Emergency Management. Uh, and as Maria said, we talk about teamwork. That's kind of one of my main roles is to help organize the team, get the right players in the right places, uh, help the counties. Um, you've probably seen my posts on the Nickel Jesus listserv and try to keep uh, keep people abreast of what's going on uh, and provide whatever support I can. And emergency management, uh, we can talk about a little bit more later, but they provide other than cyber support as well for these uh, elections. So thank you. 
Uh, Colonel Barron. Hey, uh, my name is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Seth Barron. I'm the Chief of Cyber Operations for the North Carolina National Guard. Um, and like Maria said, I think we're considered part of Maria's team, as everybody else, whether they want to or not, is part of Maria's team. Um, but we uh, we uh, help wherever we can. We have a, an assessment team that many of you are probably familiar with at this point, going out and do county assessments, uh, as well as an incident response team. Uh, if the need arises, we can uh, assist. And I think all the panelists on this call are, are have some role in that uh, incident response. So, um, and in terms of just elections, uh, we support the state board wherever they need us. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sean? Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Sean McCloskey. I'm with the uh, Department of Homeland Security's Cyber and Infrastructure Security Agency. Uh, I lead a program there called the Cybersecurity Advisor Program, where we put uh, cybersecurity professionals uh, at the state and local level across the country. Uh, personally, I'm based here in Charlotte. Um, I'm also part of Maria's team. Uh, I've been working with this group uh, of panelists here for almost the past year, um, and it is really a closely knit group. We do we we talk to each other regularly, um, and I wanted to share it today during the panel some some of the services that we offer that um, that you may not be aware of that you you can take advantage of at no cost. So thanks, Todd. Great. Well, uh, Sean, that might be a great sp spot to start after I you know forgot to introduce who I am. I'm Todd Shanley. I'm the CIO at Cabarrus and just uh, helping moderate this today. So I'm going to talk as little as possible and let you guys hear from the, the experts here. But um, uh, maybe. Uh, Brian, did you want to talk about um, some of the the things that you have coming up, you know, that we need to be aware of as a as a county or a local government that you know is preparing for the election, you know, the next steps or you know what's going on? Yeah, you're still muted. Sorry. All right. Um, well, we have a, as many of you know, we have a June 23rd second primary that's coming up in uh, in just a bit. It's coming up within, well, a month and a couple of days. Um, that's only 18 counties are involved with that. There's actually a special election that brings one county into it. Um, most of our efforts are geared toward the November election uh, with early voting starting in early September. Um, in, in the midst of that, uh, many of the counties, at least the BOE level, um, the Board of Elections, knows that we are in the midst of migrating our SQL servers that are at the county level to the Azure Gov Cloud. Um, that migration hasn't started yet, but that will be um, done within two months. So right uh, after the June 23rd election, most all 100 counties will be in the Azure Gov Cloud. Uh, and that obviously uh, we'll be coordinating with the counties, but in case any of the Nickel Jesus members didn't know from a SEAMS, which is our statewide election information management system uh, perspective, that will be shifting. Um, and, and I can lead it out. Uh, we'll also be doing some other uh, basic, uh, there'll be security assessments that are happening at the county level. Um, I think others can talk to that more as far as what kind of process those are happening. Uh, just because you brought it up early about your move to the to the Amazon cloud, can you can you talk Azure. about how that's going to uh, affect us at the county level, or how that's going to improve that level of service, and and what roles that you, know, you need from us at the county to make sure that happens quickly? Well, um, there's always a hope that that you'll have you'll notice very little differences. There will be a couple of things that will be um, from a security level that is that's helpful. So one is that. Um, trying to maintain security on 100 different county networks is difficult um, to ensure that that is happening. So this allows us to get into, uh, have a decreased footprint, so to speak, and be able to create all our security controls around uh, the GovCloud instance. Um, the, what you will, what we're most concerned about is obviously performance and cost. Cost is not as important to you guys because we'll be handling that, but performance uh, with s slower internet connections, we are worried about latency issues. So we'll be working with counties uh, if that is a, ends up being a problem. Um, and, and the other thing is that we will then have to go through a disposal program of the old SQL servers. Uh, and so we'll be kind of releasing what that disposal program will look like at some point very soon here. Great. Great. Very good. Thank you. Thanks for covering that early. I think that's 
that's something that you know it really affects all of us and we need it does. It coming but uh you know getting that information sometimes from our directors of board of elections is you know is definitely a different process so um i'm gonna jump over to maria because i know she's got to jump off for another meeting a little bit later but i wanted to to give her a chance to tell you know apparently we're all on maria's team we make sure we all uh you know let the boss talk enough but um just from uh uh talking about some of the things that you guys are doing at the state level to to support the election i think that would probably be a great spot to spot to start sure thanks todd and you know some of you may have heard me mention this before um, when it comes to cyber in the state we have adopted this whole state approach to cyber which means that we will bring anything, any resource to bear if there is a cyber incident um, that impacts any of our, our um, state, local government um, entities. So we definitely want to make sure that you're aware of that, that um, it's not just a one-time thing with us. Um, elections is very important, but it's not just the elections. It's, it's our regular routine um, as far as support. And we leverage, and you'll hear um, our National Guardsman, Lieutenant Colonel um, Barron mention um, some of the activities and go into specifics as to some of the activities that they're taking in, uh, in order to ensure the security around, uh, again, elections, but not just elections, uh, just basically trying to ensure that we have a good, solid, secure footprint um, within our environment so that we are not, we make ourselves a hard target, if you will, against all the attacks that are coming at us. And, and you're fully aware, and I don't wanna have to, um, I don't wanna regurgitate all the, the incidents that have happened within 2019, 2018, you know, 2020, that, um, that uh, led up to the, the pandemic that we're dealing with right now. Um, some of the things though that you may not be aware of, and most recently, um, we are, we've tried, and we're working with the Board of Elections to uh, get the, um, the local counties that are not on an NC, on a .gov domain to leverage our um, .gov instance at nc.gov. Um, so far, we've transitioned two counties under uh, the nc.gov domain um, to allow for better protection of your websites, uh, protections against attacks, and so on and so forth. Um, we, if you are one of those entities, and we highly encourage all of those that are not using a .gov that have not gotten a .gov um, uh, domain that you contact me or my team or Tom um, and we can start that process. It literally is less than a day that once we submit the ticket, we can have you already as a subdomain under the nc.gov. Um, so please take advantage of that. Please contact us as soon as possible. And then that's one of the, the newer things that we're doing here. Um, you, you, you'll you hear again from um, Seth, he's going to talk about some of the other boots on the ground activities, but uh, the, the one thing I want to leave you with is that everyone here on this panel, we're all, you know, a team in everything that we do, and if somebody lacks a particular resource, um, we can, you know, we'll find it uh, within the many team members that are part of this, um, this group. Um, we are here to support you. If you have any questions or anything, any concerns, um, please contact us and we will definitely uh, assist where we can. And, and Maria, you, you can probably help me direct who those questions can go to, but I think the, um, I've heard you speak in the past about uh, reporting incidents and things like that and, and that, that process. And then, you know, we all experience malware or phishing, you know, at, at what threshold do we you know, do we consider it a cyber event that's reportable or something that we should be passing up that you know, that's affecting Brian and Tori on that side, you know, specifically on the election, but all the way through our, you know, our normally daily work? All right. Thank, thank you for that, Todd. And yes, um, again, some of you may have heard me mention House Bill 217 that was signing, signed into law in August of uh, 2019. And basically what that does is it requires that um, local government report any cyber incidents. And when we say cyber incidents, not any kind of commodity malware type activity, but more along the lines of um, things that cost, uh, things like ransomware attacks against your, your, your uh, infrastructure, uh, breaches, those types of things that are more, um, where there's a loss of income potentially uh, impacting uh, you know, citizens and so on and so forth. So uh, activities against your 911, your critical infrastructure, those types of things. Um, and then we have those resources, uh, which some of you may have been, um, 
you know, on the other end of receiving um, to bring, uh, to support you in your recovery aspects of that. Um, so, you know, we, we definitely don't want the low hanging things, but we do want to encourage that you report often. And if, when in doubt, just report it and submit that information up to Tom. Tom um, McGrath on the call here on the panel. He is the, I, I like to call it the belly button <laughs> uh, for reporting to local, uh, for local county um, members. Um, but we also have on our website, on the, the DIT, the it.nc.gov website, we do have a situation um, uh, report, reporting form that you can use to submit if you want to submit something anonymized. Um, you, can, you have the ability to submit um, through those means as well. Great. Does that answer your question, Todd? Yeah, absolutely. Marie, if you get a chance, would you mind, um, while someone is talking to uh, post that into the chat, that link to that that location where we should be posting that info on absolutely the, that would be that would be a great resource for everybody i think uh tom i think she did a great introduction for you why don't you jump in as the belly button of the uh cyber security for the state and tell us yeah, i prefer traffic cop more than belly button probably, I, but. I, I thought maybe but you know we're, we're gonna stick with that for today <laughs> especially so. from working from home passing a refrigerator yeah. every five minutes <laughs> uh, but i appreciate the chance to uh to speak here and and as Maria and everyone has said, you know, this is really a team effort. Um, some of the things we've seen, um, and, and as a traffic cop, I'm trying to get together all the right players, pointing people in the right direction. Um, the, if it's, you know, there's a criminal intent, you know, we get the FBI involved and Jess and her squad and, or, or Brian out in the western half of the state, they get involved right away. Um, the, the technical team with the National Guard is second to none. Those folks there uh, can swoop in and really, uh, really save the day for some of these places. I guess, number one, uh, maybe not specific to elections, but number one, please have backups that are not connected to your network. That would make uh, restoration much easier. We found a lot of uh, people become victimized, have, if they have backups, they're connected and they're, they're also encrypted. Uh, so please do that. Um, and uh, you know, we do have resources that we could bring to bear at emergency management, I mean, if, if there's a physical problem with the uh, uh, elections location, ballots sticking together, they'll bring in humidifiers or dehumidifiers. And uh, if they need to set up a new new location, they'll they'll go ahead and do that, uh, which they did down on the coast after one of the storms uh, when during election. So the elections, you know, need to need to proceed. Um, as far as cyber goes, we try to get out uh, the the DHS folks the. Uh, Protective uh, Security Advisor, I think I got that right, PSA. Uh, Daryl Aspey, out in the, he has all state now. Bob Milish had the eastern part of the state uh, for a while, but they've been kind enough to allow me to go out with them when they do some of these, their physical assessments of the county boards of election, uh, looking at the buildings, looking, you know, a lot of physical stuff, but then also uh, thumb drives, like where are they stored? Are they stored properly? Uh, what is the procedures? Just to kind of go over the, the uh, kind of the, the left and right boundaries of how they're going to do things. So think about it ahead of time. So they provide, a, and they provide a report back to the county and to no one else. So uh, it was very, very valuable. I appreciate them allowing me to come along and talk about some cyber things. Um, I can definitely vouch for that. Daryl came here to Cabarrus and it was very helpful from, uh, if you, in counties, if you haven't taken advantage of that, it's super helpful to, to take to your board, that report is is helpful, and anything that gets stamped with, you know, from the Homeland Security, you know, your board perks right up and, and says, yeah, well, I guess we should do that. So, um, it, from a funding standpoint, it was very easy to to implement some of the deficiencies that he was able to to point out that you know, just getting that second set of eyes. So yeah, thanks, Tom. That was that's that's definitely a good shout out for for Daryl and his team. Yeah, they, the, I mean, I know there's some unique things probably about this election in that uh, the, pri the primary coming up here in, in the, I guess, less than a month, a month or so, a little over a month, uh, is that a lot of laptops, I think, have been by the counties have been loaned out to workers as they have to work from home. Uh, so there's, you know, the procedure about going in and getting those laptops back in, in service and how to, how to, you know, wipe them and get them ready and get them back out later. Those sort of things, and I know uh, Tori or Brian could speak to that. Uh, but I, I'll uh, I'll stop there. And I'll let uh, let some of the other folks speak. Thank you.
Hey, Jess, do you want to jump in? I, I just, uh, one of the things you mentioned the other day that was kind of enlightening to me was the idea that when the FBI really, you know, does step in or doesn't, that, that timeline aspect of game day versus post-incident type scenario, I think that would be, you know, interesting to the, to the group listening today. Yes, I mean, for the FBI's perspective, obviously, on um, election day and leading up to it, you know, one of our, um, you know, primary concerns with everything are any type of violations of federal election statutes. I mean, you're talking everything from voter and ballot fraud, civil rights violations, and up to obviously on the cyber front, you know, one of our big concerns is cyber operations targeting the infrastructure, um, any political organizations to change course, influence the outcomes of an election, obviously the biggest concern for us. Um, when and that's obviously leading up to but then also actually on election day um, what I think that many people don't realize is that um, it is federal law it's actually um, uh, title 18 US of uh, US code 592 which will um, it's a it's a criminal violation to send quote-unquote armed men into um, the vicinity of an open polling location so if you read into that we obviously are armed in, in our official capacity. So we are not in our official capacity allowed to be on the premise of a polling location. So it just brings into um, consideration in the event that there is a cyber incident and your infrastructure is at the same location as a polling location, um, there is a good chance that my team will not be able to actually be at that facility on election day. Um, now that doesn't mean that we wouldn't be assisting. Um, in these type of instances, we can 100% utilize the team that you're hearing from right now. So if we find out of some incident that's happening, we will be virtually um, alongside whomever that is present on scene. It just may mean that we may be in the parking lot down the street. We may actually not be able to be in that building only because of um, like I said, the, the federal law that currently exists. Um, and these are debates and conversations um, that are currently up with the Attorney General of, you know, well, if there is something that's going on, you know, can we move? I mean, obviously this would be a, a decision by the Board of Elections. Do you move the polling location? And so then there would be a larger incident response capability. And at that the time when there's no longer an active polling location, could we be on scene? Again, that does not mean that the FBI would not be involved. It's just some, there's some little caveats that we have to be very cognizant of on election day uh, that like I said, most people wouldn't even consider or factor in. Um, again, like I said, lead up to afterwards, um, no issues whatsoever. It's just actually on uh, election day. Great. And from a like, open source threat perspective, is there anything that you, you'd like to share that, uh, you know, that you want us to, to be aware of or we should we should be looking at or, or thinking about. I know COVID-19 things are just, you know, have changed our perspective on, on a lot of things, but I didn't know if there was anything extra you wanted to share about that. So, I mean, specific to COVID-19, I mean, I think that it goes without saying and probably the, the audience um, and certainly the panel members as well are seeing what that um, most likely what that we're seeing through our collection platforms. I mean, we're seeing a significant uptick in everything from your PPE fraud, uh, you know, individuals claiming that they have tests and they actually don't have tests or that they have, um, like I said, specific levels of PPE and like I said, which, uh, you know, unfortunately is all fraudulent and what that they may have. Everything from then, um, you know, your charity frauds, um, significant, significant uptick in phishing uh, activity. We are seeing um, universities that conduct uh, COVID-19 research that are heavily being, um, like I said, that targeted um, by both nation state and criminal actors um, on top of biopharma uh, companies. Like I said, just, it would go without saying that uh, the entities that are, like I said, at the, you know, the front lines of trying to come up with the vaccine and all of the research around it, that they are being heavily targeted right now. Um, with all that, unfortunately, also comes ransomware. Um, like I said, that we have seen a significant amount of ransomware to include at except hospitals, biopharm, et cetera, that are being targeted right now. So like I said, it kind of goes without saying that, you know, what are some of the most important entities right now? Um, and it's, it's those, that industry. Uh, so like I said, we, we are seeing a significant um, uptick on that side. Also with everybody, you know, and the majority of the country working from home right now, and obviously you're seeing targeting of, you know, everything from VPN to you know, an uptick in, business email compromise and email account takeover. Uh, like I said, you're just seeing a lot more 
transactions now that are virtual. So um, where you may, as an organization, you used to have two-factor authentication before any wire transfers go out the door. Well, if you're not sitting next to that person to verify, um, like I said, some of those security practices may be a little bit more lax right now. So we have seen a significant um, same thing uptick in the business email compromises. So in the event of any type of unauthorized wire transfers that go out the door, um, please continue to contact us. Um, like I said, you can go to ic3.gov. Uh, if you don't have um, like the personal contact information for the FBI, um, go to ic3.gov and that will get immediately routed over uh, to uh, the FBI office, whether it's Charlotte or Raleigh, um, and we can work on trying to pull those funds back. Um, we actually have a 76% rate on re getting the funds returned to you when we know within 48 hours. So just a little plug there that if anything like that does happen, please continue to, to contact us and notify us. And then as Tom was saying, like I said, backups, you know, obviously that's a critical piece of everything. So continue to maintain good backups, get them off your network um, at an offsite, um, like I said, and hopefully um, that you won't be a victim of ransomware, but in the event that if you are, you'll be in a much better place when it comes to remediation. I think that was a great segue into the Lieutenant Colonel Barron's um, on-site uh, assessment plans and uh, response scenario that the National Guard brings to the table. Uh, thank you. Um, so we have um, a, a multiple lines of effort. Um, I think the one that you guys probably know the most about is our uh, cybersecurity assessment team that is out um, trying to get to all 100 counties. Um, we've been on a little bit of a pause with the pandemic, um, but we were uh, at 18 counties so far, um, and the plan is still to get to all of them, um, and that will provide a comprehensive um, evaluation audit of your cybersecurity practices. Um, the good part about that is it's a report that goes only to you guys, um, and it's top to bottom. We look at everything we can um, and uh, you know, share that information with you. Um, and then what we've recently implemented um, on the heels of that are some of the, some of the takeaways um, that we've seen uh, is some training at the county level. Um, and uh, we did one last week on incident response plans. Uh, the next one, I think, is going to be in two weeks, and it's going to be on vulnerability management. Um, and the reason we've chosen those topics is directly from the outputs from the assessments is um, some of the incident response plans uh, have not been practiced or not fully realized. So uh, we, we took those assessments and started to create training for the counties um, and, and other critical infrastructure um, that they can participate in, uh, especially during uh, all the telework stuff. Um, you know, the, the other line of effort that we have um, that some of you may be familiar with and everybody on the panel is involved uh, directly in is our um, incident response panel. And you heard Jess talk about ransomware. Uh, this year alone, uh, we've had 10 ransomware response missions already. Um, and uh, that's uh, about a 250% increase over this time last year. Um, you know, so it's, uh, it hasn't gone anywhere. Um, it's getting worse. So, um, you know, uh, as, as Tom said, you know, the backups are great, but if they're not secure and and separate and um, tested that they don't do a whole lot of good. Uh, but um, so we have, you know, those are our two main lines of effort. We also, in terms of election security, we're right there with Brian and Tori um, doing whatever they need us to do, whether it's uh, assisting with monitoring or uh, walking through some of their new infrastructure, um, you know, just uh, from a, another set of eyes an outside set of eyes. So uh, I've, uh, I'm privileged to have a, a very talented team uh, with a, with a, vast skill set um, and we can sort of plug holes wherever you need it um, you know we've done some of our other things election related is uh, one county in particular rented some laptops and asked us to scan them for vulnerabilities and I'll tell you uh, the first one we turned on uh, had a virus so um, if you are if you are renting laptops uh, please don't just plug them in and start using them uh, if you if you if you want us to come out, let me know. Uh, if, if you have another solution, that's fine too. Um, but you know, in terms of uh, USB drives, any of that stuff, make sure it's tested uh, and validated. Um, you know, just because it came from a vendor that said it was good, uh, I wouldn't take that um, uh, for granted. I, I would certainly, um, you know, 
find another solution to get them scanned or uh, call me and I'll send somebody out there to assist. So uh, again, we're, we're here to assist wherever you guys need us, um, whatever, um, if, you, if you need help with walking through a project or just another set of eyes, let us know. Great, thank you, Colonel. That was uh, that's great information. Uh, the, the the rent and scan thing, I think, is 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 big because I know a lot of our directors, you know, take a lot of that work onto themselves and may not call us as IT professionals. But I think that that may that may that should should be something all of the IT staff here on the call should be taking as a as a way to put their foot in the door and say, let me get in there and help you because I think that's a that's a real important piece because I think sometimes when they rent them from the third parties and then try to implement the solution themselves with their current with their election staff that might get missed well yeah. let's just say it's probably getting missed <laughs> todd can i jump in real quickly I, I yeah absolutely mention, Please. yeah i forgot to mention earlier um about the the sensors that we are deploying on the county infrastructure um as another tool another uh, defense in depth mechanism um and i know that um in speaking with our national guard partners that they've seen some success in in activity being blocked um, that could have potentially ended up in, you know, another ransomware infections. So, you know, that's something that we are definitely trying to fast track in advance of the elections to make sure that we can cover as many as we are funded for. Uh, we're, we're definitely focusing on getting additional funding to cover all counties. And, and you know, if, if I had my way, we all would have some, you know, means of protection, additional means of protection on our, our infrastructure. Um, but of course, you know, it's, it's subject to, um, to funding. But if you, if you have those eye sensors, you know, make sure that they're, um, contact us if, if it's not working efficiently and if, if it's not in blocking mode, you know, we need to get them blocking as, as fast as possible. Um, I, I can't see Ted Norris, but I'm sure he's shaking his head right now because he talked about how happy he was that Tom hooked him up with an eye sensor down in Onslow uh, yesterday on a, on a session we had. So. Um, yeah. uh, can, I, can, I, can I speak to that for a second? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just, just um, so uh, some of the stuff, Maria, Maria jogged my memory a little bit. Um, just in the last two days alone, um, we've seen two counties uh, who were beaconing back to China, um, you know, with, with, on the eye sensors. So my team is actively monitoring um, the eye sensors. Um, and, you know, it's, it's as simple as we see something, uh, typically we pass it off to Tom's team um, and they'll contact the county. Um, and if the county has questions, we'll, we'll give them all the information we have um, and we'll help them troubleshoot it, run down, give them the best practices, try to minimize how much digging they have to do. Uh, but the one today was, was simply a beacon that was blocked, but we still wanted to pull that off. And when we talk about the ransomware, um, you know, a uh, problem that's out there, a lot of times the indicators of the ransomware have been there for a long time. And if you're on the eye sensor and we can pick that up, uh, when it happens, um, hopefully we can prevent that from from spreading through the network. So uh, definitely, definitely, if you can get your hands on an eye sensor, let Maria pay for it. But uh, go ahead and put it <laughs> in, and uh, we are uh, we're happy to assist on that as well. Yeah, Maria, you opened the door on that. That was that was, that was your fault. I'm I'm going to say because I wasn't going to. You know, I know Ted mentioned it yesterday, and I wasn't going to put Tom on the spot because he had already said he was going to drop out if he was put on the spot again. So we we're just going to. I would gladly support <laughs> everyone if I could. Yeah, I know. You know we we know. We appreciate all that you guys are doing for us. But it looks like 44 hands went up in the chat window. So everybody wants one. So good luck. Uh, Sean, uh, why don't you jump in and tell us a little bit about some of the things that, you know, I know the, the acting secretary was here earlier in the year touring Mecklenburg County. It was, I was able to attend that event. That was that was great. So I know that Homeland is well invested in election security and is definitely interested in that. So uh, Sean, why don't you tell us a little bit of what CISA is doing for us? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Todd. Um, yeah, heavily invested is, is the word for it. I've been doing election stuff pretty much nonstop since 2017. So it's, uh, it's a big part of what we do. Uh, we've dedicated a lot of resources uh, to, to assist election officials, to assist in securing the election. Uh, over in the chat, I posted up a link to our cyber resources hub there. And there's a lot of things in there. Uh, I could spend an hour talking about it all, but I just wanted to throw that link up there, let people take a look at that. But there's three things in there I wanted to really highlight for everybody. And the, the first one obviously is assessments. Uh, we offer a series of non, no cost assessments um, 
some of which are delivered by our cybersecurity advisors in the, in the state and some which we bring in a team from headquarters to, to conduct. And the, the primary one I wanted to, to talk about was um, our vulnerability scanning. And, then, and that's at the top of the list there in our, in our assessments window. Um, it's really just a secondary look at, at your external perimeter um, to kind of confirm what you believe is open, what ports you think you have open and what, you know, uh, patch level or what, uh, you know, vulnerabilities are present there in your, in your, in your uh, external facing IP addresses. And that's a weekly report. It's no cost. You just provide the IP addresses um, and then uh, they're automatically scanned weekly and a report delivered. So I just wanted to, to highlight that one. The other ones, um, range from strategic level with, with the cyber resilience review all the way down to a uh, remote pen test or a pen test, uh, which is a little bit harder for us to scale. Um, but uh, I really wanted to highlight vulnerability scanning, which is really easy to scale. We can get everybody enrolled. Um, if you're interested in that, I'll post my email address in the, in the chat as well. And you can, you can hit me up um, and we'll get you signed up for that. Uh, the other piece there I wanted to talk about was uh, fed VT, which is the fed virtual training environment. Um, particularly at the counting level, it's difficult to get uh, resources for training. Uh, there's a lot of good training in here, ranging from basic stuff all the way up to uh, advanced uh, security certifications, um, including the SysP and some of the, the, the higher level um, security certifications. But there's also basic level things for like the election official as an IT manager type training in there that helps uh, IT managers talk to election officials about security. Um, there's supply chain type of, of things up, trainings up there. There's coding. Um, there's all kinds of different things. Now it's free to, uh, obviously it's a, it says fed in the, in the title, which is kind of a misnomer, but it's, it's uh, free to state and local as well. So if you have a .gov email address, you can get signed up for that immediately. Um, automatically goes through. If you don't have a .gov uh, domain, you can still apply and it just takes a day or two to get you approved. But if you're, if you work at the county level, if you're a county employee, city, town, state employee, um, this is available to you. Uh, it's also available to veterans for free. Um, so it's, it's just a great resource to help get your trust, your staff trained up um, or refreshed on, on, on things. And it's at really no cost to you. So I wanted to point that one out. Um, another one I wanted to point out was the cyber essentials. It's on there as well. It kind of looks like this. It's really just a, a poster of kind of the basic things uh, that you can be doing. I know all the IT managers know this, but um, the cyber essentials are, are helpful in translating, hey, these are things that we need to be doing um, to your supervisors, your board of supervisors. So there's a section in there on, on the leadership role in cybersecurity. So that's just a helpful propaganda tool you can use to help push along the efforts that you're working at the county level. And then, uh, let's see, the last one was uh, training and exercises. We do have some tabletop exercises and, and, and an exercise team. So if, if, uh, if that's something that you're interested in doing, uh, that's something we can, we can request that and get that capability down either at the county level or if multiple counties want to try to put something together in neighboring counties, we can do something like that as well. Um, and then the last thing I'll say, and it's not listed here because we're not done with it yet, um, but we are working on what we're calling, a, um, it's just a workshop essentially where we can come in and talk to the county, um, not necessarily the IT folks, but all the other, you know, folks within the county that have a leadership role and talk about uh, the importance of, of cybersecurity and how, um, what their roles can be in that and how they can, they can assist. So basically helping the IT manager explain their, what they've been explaining for a long time is, you know, why security is important. Um, and that's a workshop that we're putting together that uh, we can come in and have one of our cybersecurity advisors come in and sit down for maybe two to three hours um, with the county staff and, and, and kind of go through all those, those principles. So I will post my email. The link is up there. Um, you know, and I think the greatest uh, cybersecurity resource we have is obviously each other. We're all in this together. So uh, like I said before, I've been working with everybody on this panel for probably the past year or so, um, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I'm based here in Charlotte, but uh, I have a car. We'll get somewhere pretty quick. So if, uh, if you need something, reach out to me. If I don't know the answer, I'll find out for you. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Really appreciate that. Hey, Tori. So um, jumping back to you know, election specific, what, uh, what are you seeing that we at the county level or you know, that we need to be aware of um, that you'd like to address? 
Yeah, so there there were a couple of things that that came up through the course of the other conversations that that I uh, kind of wanted to jump jump back to, and and the first of which the common theme of ransomware. I think that <laughs> that's unfortunately uh, we keep hearing about it because it keeps happening, and I just wanted to share that there was a, a one situation that I I just recently had to help out with that was uh, to be clear not a not something within Board of Elections or GovSpace at all. It was a phone a friend saying, hey, can you help me out? And uh, in, in trying to help them out, um, the statement about backups is, is critical. And, and this kind of uh, was another example of that where they were running their entire business off of a, a single system. They had backups, they had backups, which is great right up until the point that those backups were on the exact same system that they were running everything else on. <laughs> so they had, <laughs> they had never actually uh, offloaded, copied, uh, done anything more than that. Uh, so that, that uh, it was just really, really unfortunate. And ultimately, um, they, they ended up, uh, there, there really wasn't anything that could be done. So uh, they, they took a, a really big hit on that, unfortunately. Um, so that, that's one. I, so I think the, the backups and making sure those are in order and you have some way of making sure those aren't connected to the rest of your infrastructure um, is a big deal. Um, and then the other thing that came up that I think it warrants going back to is, is the laptops and the rentals because there's one thing that I think is really important and that's making sure that they're, they're rentals, right? So you're bringing them in, you're using them for the purpose and then they're going back, making absolutely sure when they're when they're uh, coming in that they're clean, but then when they're going back, that you're not sending them back with any of your data on them, whether it's uh, election related data or county related data, making sure that folks are following those in incoming and outgoing processes, whatever those look like, because uh, that, that I could see being just a really unfortunate situation where all of a sudden those, the folks who get them back don't follow a white process and they rent them out to some other random place. And now all of a sudden your data is sitting there on those systems. So um, making sure if, if wiping isn't, uh, or actually if, if this is a better option, swapping the drives, even if there's a, if you have the ability to do that and just uh, swap drives in and out um, when they come in that way, you, you don't even deal with whatever they've loaded onto that system could be a really good way to, to avoid some of those pitfalls. Um, and then I, I think just in, in general, when it comes to uh, cybersecurity, especially lately, uh, like what's been talked about with everybody working from home and remote and whatnot, um, I've certainly seen an uptick in phishing attempts uh, that are just trying to leverage different uh, old school tricks to get you to click on and click on links, open attachments, uh, things of that sort, uh, maybe impersonating folks that you might otherwise uh, have emailed back and forth with to try and make it look more legitimate. Those types of activities have certainly not gone down. If anything, they've gone up. So just making sure that you take a good read on what you're you're getting into your inbox and making sure that it is legitimate um and it, it doesn't hurt to pick up the phone if there's a question on it use some other method to reach out to the person who sent it to confirm that they actually did send that uh and and it is legitimate especially if you're not expecting it um and i'll i'll leave it there no that that's all that's all great stuff tori i really appreciate you emphasizing the those points as we're those are very helpful. Uh, this may be for you or for Brian. Uh, Ray Hall was wanting to know, is there, an, is there any roadmap to move away from the local SQL for one stop and the need for Windows laptops in the polling locations? Now that's kind of could go more ops wise for you guys, but. Um, um, I'll, I'll start the conversation then Tori can add some context. Um, so I understand it to say, are we going to be able to get away from a, a VPN to a SQL database, um, which is when we migrate to uh, the Gov Cloud, we for early voting, which is what this question is geared toward, not for election day. Election day tends to be air gapped, uh, but for early voting, um, we are 
definitely moving away from that. We will have to as we go to the Azure Gov Cloud uh, to connect those currently thick client applications to the Azure Gov managed instance. Uh, there is an effort to do a secure API. Uh, there's even been talk about a virtual desktop um, infrastructure for that as well. But there's definitely efforts along those those uh, means to get away from that SQL database connection that's being referred to. Uh, I know it's a pain, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I think that answers the question. Uh, there, there is an effort to to have better endpoint security overall on on our laptops, but some of that is in flight, and I don't have any solid answers for you on that. Tori, anything you would like to add? Um, maybe maybe just a, a head a heads up with with some of what we've seen with some of the same servers. Um, they they've been there for a while, right? So there's there's uh, in some cases. Uh, there might be some need to help out uh, the county board of elections folks with some other typical IT infrastructure pieces. And as as we find that, I'm sure that'll get communicated out where it needs to. It's not. It's it's certainly not going to apply to everybody. But uh, like uh, different um, different internet based services that that might need to be shifted around to to make sure that they uh, that the county boards have everything they need to keep moving forward and keep doing what they do. And I'm not sure if the question was more posed to the the actual architecture of the application, if that's the case. Uh, the answer is also yes, but that's part of the because the the application has a um, SQL Express back end. Um, the answer to that is that that's going to be part of the seams modernization project that is hopefully launching in in July. Yeah, yeah. Ray just chatted and he says, "Yeah, more on the local SQL Express instance." Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. cool. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thanks for for delving into that. I think you know those of us who support them closely kind of live those intricacies and you know have 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 our love hate relationship with some of that as much as you guys do. <laughs> Very much do. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, and I, knowing, knowing that you inherited a lot of that, Brian is, you know, not, uh, not unknown to us down here at the County level. So it's, you know, you guys are doing a great job to, to improve the service and, and make, make great strides. So I appreciate that. Um, Ryan McCurry uh, had asked in a chat about um, CARES Act money and how, if, if there was any knowledge on how that was gonna be applied to elections or any of that. Uh, Maria dropped in some, some info and basically left it at your feet, Brian. Yeah, so I can partially answer that because it's from a procurement perspective. And what I can do is, is tell you, I looked it up while you guys were talking because uh, <laughs> um, I wasn't sure. I know we had a lot of efforts that were in, in flight on that. So um, there's really two phases of that, and, and we have three different sources of federal funding. We have HAVA 2018, HAVA 2019, and the CARES Act, and where I don't know is the distinction between those, what's being funded by what. But what is CARES Act eligible tends to be improvement, improvements for absentee by mail voting, given the fact that we expect far more absentee by mail voting to occur because of COVID, and that is what makes that eligible. So in that venue there are several options that have been talked through which ones have actually got our executive team approval i'm not quite sure but i want to i'll go over them and and whether they they get funded i, I won't be able to answer that at, at least at this call but there's talks about uh this will maybe make more sense to those that are elections heavy but ballot sorting software um ballot duplication software at the county level as well that's when if you have a you know, a ballot that's returned by a, a a, a male, a, a military voter, often those ballots aren't on the, the size that it should be to go through a tabular. So you have the ballot duplication software that helps facilitate that. Extra ballot printing, um, automatic ballot envelope openers, I've even heard about that. Um, uh, extra desktops and support to handle the uh, increased absentee by mail activity. There's even, um, we're purchasing central tabulation scanners uh, that can be then made available for county use um, so that we could deploy those when needed. Uh, that is just high speed scanners that can be allowed uh, to, to go out to the county in, in the field. 
and with that, by the way, we have uh, new positions. They're called uh, security and support technicians or SSTs that can help facilitate some of that on the ground workload that, that happens and, and provide those scanners to get them to the folks in the field. Um, and then the second piece that has been talked about is actually pulling the, the day of the election. And the, what has been talked about for funding there are things like pe plexiglass shields. Um, I forget what they're called, but they're little poles that then you can set up lines. There's a fancy name for it, but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, staunch or something like that. Yeah. yeah I think um, so. And then so, and then also disinfectant kits and um, professional cleaning services for the polling sites. Uh, so those are all that's been talked about. How much and a of pen that for every voter, voter, right? Yeah, I think an ink, ink, an ink pen for every voter. I think that was. So I've I've heard that too. Yes, okay. masks. I've heard masks as well. Yes. Um, so those are some of the options that are out there. How many are being funded? I'm not sure at this point, but I can. So try to just a clarifying question on that is: so I know uh, the governor passed a bill that you know passed money directly to the counties for CARES Act type situations. Is that um, for the things that you talked about? Are, is that going to be funded through the state board of elections, do you think? Or is that going to be something that you, so we need to get our list to our election director. So I've already got a list from my, my local director of, I need X number of PCs to work with this, this piece. And we're already doing layouts and things like that for, for election day. You know, is that something we push back to her to push back to the state board to see if these are care of, CARES Act funded items, or is there others supposed to come out of those local dollars? Um, the CARES Act, and I'm going to give you a partial answer because, like I said, I'm not heavy in the procurement piece, but the partial answer I do know is the CARES Act is, as far as I can tell, is federal funding directly to state boards of elections and then the comparable, they're not always state boards, they're sometimes Secretary of States and other states. Um, but what you might be mentioning is I know that there's an effort on some of these federal funds, there's a matching fund requirement at the General Assembly level, and there's efforts to push those directly to the counties. I don't know where those efforts are, and um, I couldn't talk to that. No, uh, and I apologize for getting in the weeds on that. It's just you know, one of those, you know, I'm sure everybody's going to want to know what their next steps should be. Um, we have probably about you know, six, seven minutes left. Was there a topic that we didn't cover that any of you would like to to kind of uh, chime in on that we really should have um, hit harder that I missed? I can just bring up one other alibi real quick. Um, just wanted to um, also just highlight, I think a lot of times there's a, a misconception that the FBI or federal partners that we may have information pertaining to your county and we're holding it back because, you know, we just want to hold on to it and conduct a logical investigation. If we have any indication of any type of ongoing targeting, compromise, et cetera, that is information that we will get into your hands like as soon as that we have it. There's not gonna be anything that, that we're gonna hold on to to potentially jeopardize things and jeopardize you. So just so that you know, that is something that, that we will arm you with as soon as that we have any indication again, of even if it is just in the targeting phase, but it's also not something that we're just gonna hold on to and just you know relate to between you and, uh, you know, and the FBI and other federal partners. Like I said, we bring in the team that's here. So that is something where that um, any indication of that type of targeting will be bringing in the Board of Elections, we're bringing in state uh, entities as well. So just again, something just that way, um, you know, there isn't, uh, like I said, that notion that we're just holding on to it and everything's classified. Great. Thanks, Jess. Chris McDaniel, you had asked how to get a hold of, hold of Jess. She had posted her contact info in the chat window. And if you, if you don't see it there, it's jani at fbi.gov. So um, she's got her information out there and, you know, if the, uh, if the rest of any time posting your uh, contact info in the, in the chat window, that would help, help some folks. I know, Sean, you've got some stuff out there. Um, the, uh, Randy Crest was asking, are EVIDs considered valid for poll books for the general election? We plan to migrate to the, uh, OVRD that I guess over, uh, but just wanted to know. Yeah, I, I answered that by chat. The answer oh, is you. by court order, yes, they are permitted. And that's really all I can say about that. But <laughs> <laughs> um, that's all I'll say. Yeah, I think it's a good spot yeah. to stop. Yes, yeah. So a head nod and move on from that one. Yeah. Uh, Tom, did you have anything you wanted to close out with? 
But just a couple things were you talked about returning laptops to vendors. The uh, same would be true even if it's in other departments in the county. So you want to yeah, clean them up as the, the equipment comes in and then you don't want to send that data back out to the parks department or something like that. So you want to uh, keep that in mind as well. The other thing is the National Guards, uh, when they do their assessment, that report they give you can be used. It's just for you, the counties, but it can be used to leverage your county commissioners and, you know, hey, here are the things that I'm not saying we're missing, but the National Guard team is saying we're missing and, and, and yeah, use that absolutely. to help get some funding. So I've heard that as, as being a valuable tool. So I just wanted to put that out there and then also just thank you guys for all that you do because you're, you're the boots on the ground in your counties keeping it safe. So thank you. Colonel, do you have anything you want to wrap up with? No, I, uh, I, th I think that we are uh, happy to be partners with the Nickel GISA. I see Randy over there in the chat, uh, who we, we speak regularly and involve uh, in a lot of our training. If, uh, if you guys have ideas for training, stuff you'd like to see us uh, focus on, uh, feel free. I'll put my email in the chat as well. Uh, if there's stuff, topics you want us to cover or anything like that, just let me know. But uh, thanks for having me. Great. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sean, do you have anything else you wanted to, to jump in with? Uh, again, I just wanted to uh, say thanks, Todd. I think uh, Nicholas Jesus is an outstanding organization. I've been around to a lot of different states, um, and, and this is a very effective organization. I was really looking forward to uh, to this when we first started talking about it about six months ago before all, all the COVID stuff happened. And uh, hopefully next year we'll, we can all meet in person. And uh, please don't hesitate to reach out for me if you have any questions. And like I said, if I can't answer it, I'll find you an answer. We'll find somebody who does. Um, we're, we're all here to help. and. Uh, Look forward to uh, continuing to work with everybody. Great. Thanks, Sean. Tori, you get to close us out. <laughs> oh, boy. Big, big, big shoes on that one. Um, finish. So, you no. Know, <laughs> uh, just just a, a huge, huge thanks for, for the opportunity today, uh, echoing basically what everybody said about it. And uh, uh, love to see that that you guys are concerned about things and, and trying to – uh, improve your cybersecurity postures out at the counties uh, as much as possible as well. It's it's great to see. I think it's uh, just goes to show that there's there's a lot of support and a lot of care about what everybody's doing around the table on all of these issues. So thanks very much for having uh, myself as well as everybody else. Absolutely. Thank you, Tori. Brian, did you have anything else you wanted to, to close us out? I hate to leave you on the overhead last, last comment. No. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, the only thing I would say is um, something that I think we've done a not as good of a job as we could have over the past from a state board perspective, um, and I'm talking particularly for IT, is, is interfacing directly with county IT. We tend to go to the Board of Elections and hope that that message gets down to the county IT. And so one of the efforts we wanna do is improve that communication stream. Um, so we have a list of, of county contacts from an IT perspective that, um, that I'm not sure if it's up to date. I don't know if it's the right people. So I will be working with my team to send that list down and get an updated contact list so that what we can do in the future is instead of sending out, there's a seams update two weeks early and then it finally gets to the county the day before or the day after that release, uh, maybe have it be a little bit sooner than that. And that communication stream from IT to, to our business, to county BOE, to county uh, IT has failed on every set of those, that stream along the way. So um, we're all, all that to say is I'm not without blame there. So we're trying to improve that and make it so that that is streamlined and provide direct information to the county IT. Brian, you acknowledging that and um, pointing that out has probably gone further than you know today. <laughs> That's really important for us to know down here at the county because sometimes when it's a, you know, a faceless name or something that we're getting on these messages and that, you know, we're all going, hey, what the heck? Why are we just, right. why, why didn't somebody just tell us I think that that's that's a huge help. I, I really look forward to working with you guys more. Sounds good. And again, thank you all for taking the time out of your days to, to participate in this. It's really, I think it's been super helpful. I think the the 40 plus people who were on here earlier will will definitely have walked away with something that they didn't know before. Uh, again, thank you guys. Thank you.
Hey, everybody. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, John. Bye. Thanks, all.